constantly be in the mode of letting the Spirit of God um, adjust you and, and, and flex, flex you, be flexible. Because remember, everything that you're learning is not everything that you're supposed to carry in your knowledge alone. Like, let me just show you something. Like, say like the Lord started teaching you about um, not being stressed out or not being distracted or worried. That's not all the knowledge that was created to be in you. That's, that's the knowledge of what God has scheduled for the moment. So you want to pattern yourself so God could promote you to the next levels of conversation with him. Are you seeing this? Because what the Lord is conversing with you currently may not be even the highlight of the curriculum. The semester probably was supposed to be planted in something else, but the Lord will have to adjust the information to get you back on track. You see what I'm saying? Perfection and uprightness are two different things. Perfection and uprightness. Uprightness is what allows favor to come. But perfection is what preserves the favor that comes. Perfection is what expands the favor that comes. Uprightness is what gets God's attention, but perfection is what keeps it. All comes to your life through uprightness. It enters your life through uprightness, but it multiplies. It becomes more intense through perfection. Now, this is a real deep teaching. I want you to just, just listen to it and let it refresh your soul. When you are upright, the spirit of God begins to engage you and talk with you. But when you're perfect, the spirit of God becomes you possesses you. Second. Give me one second. When the spirit of God has conversations with you, about things that need to be changed, that is the realm of uprightness. When the Spirit of God have conversations with you about things that he's changing for you, that's the realm of perfection. Remember what I just said there. When the Spirit of God is having conversation about things that he's changing in you, that is uprightness. But when the Spirit of God has conversation about things that he's changing for you, around you, that is the realm of perfection. There is a place in perfection that's greater than the realm of uprightness because in perfection, that means that you take the information of righteousness and it, it, it becomes a part of your programming. So your soul is made up of this of the uh, particles of this information. Your soul is made up of the diaphragm. Uh, there's a word I want to use. It's, it's made up of the measurements of the mantle. So, so remember, everything that the Spirit of God says to you is actually a potential mantle. Why I say it's potential? Because you can reject it. Remember in John chapter one, verse 12, they received power because they received the, 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 uh, the words of the Holy Ghost. They received the, the information of the Holy Ghost. They received Jesus. 
So that's how the mantle moves from potential to uh, performance. Moves from potential to performance because now you're performing it now rather than it, rather than it being a possibility. So the realm of uprightness and the realm of perfection are two different things. So let me just show you something. The uprightness of Nicodemus was to pursue Jesus. All right? He came to Jesus by night, asked Jesus questions, wanted to know what it meant to be born again. Now, this is all uprightness. It is. But if we, if we go further, Jairus is actually more so in perfection. Let me show you something. Because when you look at Nicodemus, Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night, but Jairus comes to Jesus by day. Oh. And nighttime, nobody sees because mostly people are sleeping, getting ready for the next day. Jairus went to Jesus in the thick of eyes watching, people observing, and Jairus said, I don't care who does not call me to preach next weekend. I don't care who does not want me to enter into their house again. I don't care who says that I was just with a witch. I don't care who laughs at me and tells me I'm in a cult. I don't care who tells me, how could you let him into your house? You let him work magic in your house? Jairus said, truck all of y'all. <laughs> Jesus, thou son of God, I know who you is. I'm not going to be like the Pharisees. Yeah. I, I know they laugh at you. I know they talk about you, but I know who you is. And I don't care if they defame me. I don't care if they reject me from now on. I receive you, master. I see you, God. I know that you got physical arms, physical eyes. You got shoulders like me, but I see you, Jehovah. Come to my house. My daughter is dead, but I know that you the resurrection and the life. My daughter ain't got no more oxygen in you, in her, but I know that you created oxygen. My, my, my daughter is in eternity, but you created the realm of eternity. And if you want to change back the time, you can. So I'm coming to you. I know, I know that you got a physical body like all of us, but I can see you. There you is, Lord. Come to my house. And saints, remember, I want to show you something. What I told you about Jairus and Nicodemus is very deep. And you ain't never heard that before. When your prophet becomes your pastor. What should I do, prophet? Follow me. Well, how do I get? Follow me. Well, I've been here for a year. Follow me. My mama go ahead. Follow me. Well, I don't want nobody. Follow me. You notice when they get to Jairus' house, the people are laughing at Jesus. Which means that Jairus' household, his lineage, is full of mockers, scorners, witches, and warlocks that go to the synagogue. They're religious. And rebellious at the same time. When Jesus comes inside the house, 
They disrespect Jesus. They clown Jesus to the core. They're saints. I'm, I, I want to show you something. The Bible said that they were all weeping. They were all grievously weeping. And when Jesus said, she's not dead, she's sleeping. The Bible said that they went from weeping and grieving to laughing. Huh? You ever seen somebody crying over the death of their mother or their father or their child? And then all of a sudden they bust out laughing in the midst of weeping? These people were so evil that their evil spirits manifested as soon as Jesus talked. Now, I want you to see something else. Jesus didn't cast out their demons. Jesus casted out their bodies from his, from the house of Jairus. Jesus didn't cast out their devils. Nor did he rebuke their devils. He just pit them out the house. Jairus had a household of people that hated the spirit of God. So for Jairus to make this move, Jairus also pit his relationship with those people in jeopardy. Wow. Because when he pit the people out the house, Jairus didn't say, wait, Jesus, you can't do that. That's my mama. And that's my auntie on my mama's side. That's my uncle right there. You can't do that, Jesus. This person been with me since I was a little boy. They raised me up. Jesus, you can't do that. This person right here, they pay my rent. Jesus, you can't do that. This person right here, they, you know, they, they watch, they used to watch my daughter when she was small. Jesus, hey, Jesus, you can't do that. Um, because this right here is my, uh, this is my grandfather right here. He's over 90 years old. You can't do that. Jairus permitted Jesus to purge his house. When your prophet becomes your pastor. Jairus said, prophet, you my pastor now. I know we got bishops in the synagogue. I know we got the overseers in the synagogue. I know we got the high priests in the synagogue. I know we got the great centurion in the We got great, great centurion, great Betty Crocker, great, great. O'Donnell, all that. But Jesus. Prophet. You're my pastor. Come to my house and pastor me. Remove what's not of you here. See, even though Jairus asked Jesus to come raise his daughter from the dead. Jesus also raised Jairus from the dead. My God. <sighs> Jairus said, I, I don't want to live disconnected from you no more, Lord. I don't want to go through the religious motions. I don't want to be up there tossing some gold to the book of the book of Isaiah. Let's read the reading of the prophets. Everybody stand to your feet to hear the reading of your prophet, the prophet Isaiah, thou Isaiah, the prophet. I don't want to keep on playing like I'm some type of prestigious man. I'm a lawyer myself because I need to get this right. I came from you. I recognize you and let's fix this. I came from you. I recognize you. So let's fix this. I came from you. I recognize you. Lord, here you are. Some call you Jesus. Some call you carpenter. Some call you the man from Galilee. Some call you a miracle worker. Some call you a liar. Some call you a blasphemer. Some call you their God. Some call you their king. Some call you their master. Some call you their Lord. But I'm going to call you my pastor. Come to my house and pastor me. Raise up what is dead. 
I could take you into another deep angle as well because Jairus also was telling Jesus to raise up his seed. Seed resurrection. Remember, Jairus had sold the seed of this girl into her mother. Now she'd been alive for 12 years, but she's still a seed manifested. So Jairus is saying, my seed look like it's dead. Jesus said, your seed not dead, it's sleeping. Jesus said, it looked like it's dead. It looked like the enemy laughing in your house. It looked like the enemy laughing in your city. It looked like the enemy laughing at your finances, laughing at how your life is going, laughing at the threats, laughing at the attacks, laughing at how your health is going, laughing at how things look like it's happening in the course of your life today. But you're not dead, nor is your seed dead. Just sleeping. <laughs> to let the akuma is your portion. The seed got to come back. And then remember what Jesus said, give a son to eat. See, Jesus is the feeder of your seed. He watched your seed being sown. He don't forget your seed. See, Jairus is like, I sold her, Lord, and you created her. She came out. But now she dead. Jesus said, no, she's not. She's just sleeping. I'm going to raise this seed up. Yes, I, yes, I've been watching your seed. Yeah, I know your seed dead. I come to have mercy on your seed. I come to bless your seed. I come to raise up your seed. And watch this here. I come to feed your seed. I come to give bread for food. What, what 2 Corinthians 9 say? He multiplied the seed sown and give bread for food. The story of Jairus and Jairus' daughter show that Jesus don't forget the seed that was sown because this girl was sown by Jairus. She came out of the womb of her mother and Jesus 12 years later still didn't forget that she was a seed that was sown. Ma ha 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 ha. You know this deep boy, when your prophet becomes your pastor. 